How long, Lord? Will you forget me forever? Awake, Lord. Why do you sleep? Rouse yourself. Do not reject us forever. Why have you forgotten me? Why must I go about mourning, oppressed by the enemy? How long must I wrestle with my thoughts and day after day have sorrow in my heart? We are brought down to the dust. Our bodies cling to the ground. My bones suffer mortal agony as my foes taunt me, saying to me all day long, where is your God? But I trust in your unfailing love. My heart rejoices in your salvation. Rise up and help us. Rescue us because of your unfailing love. Put your hope in God, for I will yet praise him, my Savior and my God. I will sing the Lord's praise, for he has been good to me. I hope the words of that psalm that you just heard struck your heart. I mean, think about, think about how this psalm begins, Psalm 13. How long, Lord, will you forget me forever? I mean, that's heartache, that's pain. And yet the psalm finishes just six verses later. I will sing the Lord's praise, for he has been good to me. Is that psalmist kind of confusion is that, is that psalmist, you know, I, I can't decide what I feel. No, all those feelings are there. On the one hand, the psalmist is saying, it's a hard time, it's a painful time. God, I feel forgotten by you. And, and yet, I can sing to you. I can praise you because you're a good God. Boy, music is such a critical part of the biblical story, of the life of a follower of Jesus. Whether we like music or not, it's, it's part of our journey as Christians. We're told to sing a new song. The book of Psalms is 150 songs written to express the heights of joy, the depths of sorrow, the reality of fear, the ecstasy of joy. It's all here in the book of Psalms. We can sing through every part of life, including the storms. I don't know if you grew up in a musical family. I don't know if music was kind of part of your experience in growing up. But, but if, it, if it wasn't part of your experience... You may love music or not like it. If it was, you may love music or not like it. I grew up in a, uh, what I described as somebody who didn't feel very musical growing up, I grew up in a painfully musical family. <laughs> Let me explain what I mean. Uh, my sisters were in something called madrigals. They, they, we went to concerts and heard them sing. All, all my sisters played at least two instruments, and, and I think one of my sisters played three or four instruments. Very musical. My brother has a degree in choral conducting, and another degree, a master's in worship leading. Extremely musical. My dad, I, when I picture my dad driving in his car, if I sat, was sitting next to him driving, he always had music on. It was always classical music. He knew all the music. He'd drive with his left hand. He'd usually whistle along with the music. Great whistler, my dad. And he would conduct and direct while he was driving the classical music that was on the radio or on his, his uh, cassette tape. And, and so music everywhere in my, and then to top it all off, we would go to, uh, we would go to orchestral productions and we would, we would get season passes or season tickets to the, like the local theater company that did all musicals all year long. And, and, and for a non-musical guy growing up in a family like that, um, all I can say is music was a little painful for me. <laughs> I and mean, we would sit through these three-hour concerts, and they felt like 10 hours. And we'd go to these musicals. And I, the musicals we went to were so part of my life that I, I knew all the music. I knew the musicals, the words, the songs. Even though I didn't feel musical myself, it was just sort of like, it was just sort of like torturously driven into my mind. And then when Sherry and I started dating, my parents said, we'll buy Sherry tickets to the local th you know, theater company. We'll, we want Sherry to come along. And if you know my wife... By about 9 o'clock at night, she's asleep. By 9.30, it's past her bedtime, and she's starting to kind of wane. And so I can't tell you how many times we would sit and watch, you know, the, the, the Music Man or Guys and Dolls or West Side Story. Da -da 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 -da. Da -da 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 dun dun dun. I'm not going to do it. But it's there. I mean, it's, it's, it's part of my, I can't, I can't get it out of my mind, right? And so we'd go to these, these musicals, and Sherry would, we'd have dinner before. Go, so the first half, 
She would try to stay focused, but she started to doze off. Then they'd have intermission. She'd kind of perk up a little bit, and she slept through the second half of more musicals with my family with her head on my shoulder and a little pool of drool forming. As I loved her, I let her drool on me. And that, that was my journey growing up. So much so that as I became an adult and a Christian, I, I wasn't... Uh, the hardest thing for me as a Christian was the whole music thing, the singing, and, and I, I praised God with my heart, but I didn't want to sing songs with my lips. That's something I learned over time. And I remember my music leader at the church I served in Michigan for 14 years, uh, she, one day she was humming, and you know how you get a song in your brain and just sort of you're humming it and you don't even know it, like kids' songs are like that. You know, you're teaching a kid a song and later in the day you're in a business meeting and your mind is playing through five little duckies or something, you're like, oh, I gotta get that out of here, I'm supposed to stay, you know, and, and so this, our music leader was humming this song. And I said, oh, West Side Story. And she said, what? I said, well, you were just humming, uh, you know, Maria. Maria, I just met a girl named Maria. And so, it's there, okay? And so, so I said, oh, and she goes, how do you know that? I said, oh. I said, I have a painful experience with music growing up. I, did, I, I hadn't told her. I don't tell anybody. It's just kind of part of my past. And so she started playing like, like musical trivia. And she'd, she'd give me a, a line for a song or she'd hum something. And I'd say, oh, that's from the music man. And then she said, oh, that, that's from Showboat. And she's like, oh my gosh, I can't believe seven brides for seven brothers. And, and, but here's the thing about music. It, it's powerful. It, it's a learning tool. It's an expression of worship. And the Bible, the biggest book in the Bible, kind of right in the middle of God's word, is all songs, 150 of them. And these songs show us that we can sing through the days of our life even through coronavirus, even through economic upheaval, even through unemployment, even through body ailments, aches, and sickness, and bad diagnoses. We can sing through anything, but sometimes the song is in a minor key. It's not always a happy song. And the thing about the book of Psalms is though it has many different kinds of songs, the one grouping of Psalms that's the largest are the ones called the laments. Those are the kind of passages you've heard read through our service today. These, these, these songs that talk about heartache and pain and struggle and feeling far from God and where are you, Lord? And I feel like I'm sinking in quicksand and I'm struggling. And yet all of these songs of lament also have a sense of, and yet, God, I trust you, yet I love you, yet you are my God. It's hard, but I'm holding to my God. And that's really the message today. How to, singing through the storms, psalms for every season of life, even the hard ones. And we're going to look at two of those songs that you can sing in the storms of life. They represent many, many songs in the book of Psalms that carry you through. So I'm going to read first Psalm 3. If you have your Bibles, you can, you can open uh, in, in your Bible to Psalm 3. We've been walking through the book of Psalms uh, in, in the daily devotions, the Monday, Wednesday, Friday devotions that became Monday, Wednesday devotions, and eventually will be just one day a week devotions. But we're going to finish all the way through Psalm 150 doing that, and then I'll probably find something else to do, a once a week video devotion. We're going to keep doing that because people have really appreciated those. And if you haven't signed on, you can still go online and sign on for those, but I, I'm going to keep doing them even when, when it's not essential, but I think it's important, and we're going to keep having one a week. But as I read Psalm 3, I want you to try to notice three things. Number one, try to notice the psalmist, who's David in this, King David in this case, he wrote the Psalm, psalm 3. Notice his emotional state. There's a lot of emotion in this psalm. So when I read it, notice his emotional state. Second, uh, notice his connection to God. Even though he's struggling, there's a deep connection to God. And third, I want you to notice the setting. And I'll give you a little background. This psalm is written uh, when David is going through one of the most painful moments of his life. At, at the beginning of the psalm, it says this, a psalm of David when he fled from his son Absalom. What had actually happened was his son who he loved, his son who he cared about, his son who was tough and rebellious. And if you ever had a kid who's tough and rebellious, you know the pain of it. But for David, this kid not only was tough and rebellious, but he, he actually mounted a military coup against his own father, David, he drove him out of Jerusalem, off the throne, and this is the song that David sings in this moment of his life of loss and pain and family dysfunction and struggle and a military coup and abandonment and leaving the throne. I mean, it's a painful time. And listen to the emotion and the message 
of this psalm and David's connection with God even in a hard time. Lord, how many are my foes? How many rise up against me? And he's talking about his own son and the people that have gathered with him. Many are saying of me, God will not deliver him, but you, Lord, are a shield around me. My glory, the one who lifts my head high. I call out to the Lord and he answers me from his holy mountain. I lie down and sleep. I wake again because the Lord sustains me. I will not fear though tens of thousands assail me on every side. Arise, Lord, deliver me, my God. Strike all my enemies in the jaw. Break the teeth of the wicked. From the Lord comes deliverance. May your blessing be on your people. Any emotion in that song? Any emotion being expressed in that psalm? Any connection to God in the midst of a difficult time? That's all happening here. So as we talk about singing through the storms today, I hope that you see that, that this book, the book of Psalms, these psalms of lament show us that we can sing to God and still worship God with utter honesty in the darkest of days and the longest of nights. And some of you feel like that's where you are right now. Some of you are like, all right, already, can I get back to my life? How long will this last? When's this going to be over with? Lord, help. Some of you are feeling that. You, you're praying like the psalmist. You're praying like David. You're being honest with your heart and expressing it to God. Keep doing that. But as you express the pain, also express your faith and your confidence in God. So we're understanding today and we're learning that I can sing through the storm. And I want to give you eight different reasons you can sing even through a storm. Here's the first one. I can sing through the storm not because I never face life storms and life is always easy. Some people feel like, you know, I can sing my way through life because there might be a little cloud in the distance. There's never going to be a storm on my life. Others might struggle. I'll never struggle. But look at it. Look at how the psalm begins. If you have your Bible still open or your Bible app, look at verse one. Lord, how many are my foes? How many rise up against me? David is saying, you know, there's enemies coming against me. In this case, my own son. But there's so many foes, so many enemies. So here's the key. Don't kid yourself. Hard times come to all of us. This is just the way life is. Our kids and our grandkids can struggle, and it breaks our heart. Those are hard times. Financial turmoil and struggles and wanting more and lacking what you want. That's hard. That's painful. Friends that we love move away. And we don't get to spend time with them the way we used to. Or maybe a friend turns on us and betrays us. It's painful. Bodies break. And bodies break down with time. And it's hard. It's hard to understand that, man, I can't do what I used to do. And, and, and this happened or that happened. And it's difficult physically. Emotions can be unstable. Our physiology, our chemistry can be out of balance. And, and man, it, we, we try to figure out how to navigate that because sometimes our body just isn't working how we want it. Our emotions are, are throwing us one way or another. Those are hard times. Depression can set in and, and just sort of a cloud drops into our life. Man, every one of us face hard times. We can sing through the storms not because there's never any storms but we can continue to look to God and cry out to God even in the painful times. Here's the second thing. I can sing through the storm because I know who protects me. I know that whatever's coming against me and there's gonna be stuff, whatever I'm going through, I know the one who protects me. Look at verse three of Psalm three. But you, Lord, are a shield around me. My glory, the one who lifts my head high. I love that picture of God lifting up your head. Don't look at the ground. Don't keep your face in the dirt. Look up to heaven. Look up to God. Celebrate in the midst of a difficult time because God, you are the shield around me. Remind yourself, God is my shield. I encourage you to say that right now. If there's other people around you, say it together. If you're alone, say it out loud. God is my shield. One more time. God is my shield. He is. You, you don't always feel it. You don't always see it. But man, God is watching over you. God is protecting you and me. I wonder so many, sometimes how many times I would have been in trouble or gotten killed or done something if, if God hadn't been my shield. I believe one day when I see him face to face, 
God's going to have some fun pulling back the curtain of my life and saying, do you have any idea how many times I shielded you? Do you have any idea how many times you could have run off the road and killed yourself? Have you ever had one of those moments where you're driving at night? Or maybe sometimes in the daytime. And all of a sudden, as you're driving, you hear this. You know that sound? Where you hit those rumble strips on one side or the other. And man, you're glad when they're there. Because usually what's happened is, you just for a moment dozed off. And you say, well, those rumble strips saved me. Maybe. But it may be the fact that you could have gone right off the road and God said, hold on. And he just was a shield to protect you. I believe that you and I are going to see more times that the trouble you could have gotten in, that I could have gotten in when you did that thing in junior high or that thing in high school or that thing in college or that thing last week. I think, I think that God is the one who watches over us and protects us. I was driving one time on icy roads in Michigan. I was actually not driving. I was in the passenger seat. And my brother-in-law, Mark, who's, who's been with Jesus for about a year now, a little over a year, uh, but Mark was driving. And we hit what's called black ice. And if you're, if you're in the Midwest, you know what I'm talking about. If you're in Monterey, California, and you haven't left this area, you don't know what I'm talking about. But it's basically black ice is when the road becomes slick with ice, but you can't even see it. So you're driving along, and all of a sudden, your car becomes like an air hockey puck. You remember air hockey, that game where you hit that little puck, and it just floats on the air. The car goes, and all of a sudden, a car just begins to kind of turn and slip, and there is, I mean, nothing you can do. And so Mark, like, turned the wheel. We start turning, and he realized there was nothing. He literally leaned back, put his hands up like this, and just said, let's see where we land. And we were kind of in a country area where, where the roads kind of went like this and then bowed down, and then there were ravines on both sides where your car would probably, you wouldn't flip over, but you'd fall sideways into the ravine. And we're going like this, and now the car's going, and it's turning slowly like an air hockey puck, turning, turning, turning. It starts sliding off the road, turning, sliding off the road, across to oncoming traffic. Thankfully, there was no cars coming. God's shield around us. And all of a sudden, the car goes backwards, and literally backwards, slides slowly and stops in someone's driveway. And there wasn't like a driveway for another half mile here and a quarter mile behind us. We just, were like, and we just, we all sat there. Okay, what do we do? And he actually then slowly got back on the road and we went about five miles an hour the rest of the way getting home. Was God delivering us? Was God protecting us? I I think so. He was shielding us. He was watching over us. Number three, I can sing through the storm because I know who sustains me. You know, God shielding you is one thing, but sustaining is lifting you up and strengthening you as you walk through life. Look at verse five. I lie down and sleep I wake up again because the Lord sustains me. He gives sustaining power. So here's what I encourage you to do. Keep perspective. God gives sustaining power in the storm, not me. I didn't make it through that time, that painful situation in my own power. But God was sustaining me. God was at times carrying me when I couldn't carry myself. And sometimes we make it through and we look and go, oh, look what I did. And we have no idea that God is uplifting and sustaining and fortifying us in those difficult, painful times. I, I want to be honest with you as a pastor. Uh, the, the, the first two months of the coronavirus um, became an immediate time of demanding more than I've ever had demanded of me as a pastor. Not, not that the church demanded it of me, but the cir- circumstances did. And, and the amount of preaching and the amount of teaching and the amount of daily devotions and the amount of connecting with people and working with our staff and trying to posture shoreline for a next chapter with the economy changing, getting us ready to be responsible and move forward without, without crashing financially. I mean, just, just all these different things that nobody invited, nobody wanted, nobody asked for, but man, we're there. And some of you feel the same thing I'm talking about. It became that, that first two months was just this heavy time. And there was a point along the way, well, not a point along the way. There there were numerous times along the way where I said, God, if you don't sustain me, if you don't give me strength to write one more sermon, if you don't give me strength to to, make five more calls and write five more letters and strategize one more, if you don't give me strength, I can't do it. Because there was a number of times in those two months I came to the end of myself and said, God, sustain me. If you don't sustain me, I got nothing left. You ever been there? Um, so maybe you're there right now. But what I can tell you is this, God sustained me again and again and again. And when I ran out and had nothing left, God said, what you don't have, I can fill you with. And you felt that too. 
And so we've got to understand that, that God gives me sustaining power in the midst of the storm. And there's something so powerful about that because you begin to realize, yeah, I can't make it through everything on my own. I can't do it all on my own. We, we want to be, well, I'm grown up. I'm big. I can do it by myself. Whether you're four years old or 94 years old, we're never big enough that we can do it all by ourselves. We need our God and his power to sustain us. And those are good moments when we recognize, I must have the sustaining power of God or I won't make it through. And then when he leads you through, you say, to him be the glory. I hope you know what I'm talking about. In those moments, turn your heart to God. Number four, I can sing through the storm because I know who delivers me. Yes, yes, God shields us. Yes, God sustains us. But he delivers us. He saves us. Look at verse eight. From the Lord comes deliverance. For your blessing, may your blessing be on your people. I want to encourage you in those storms of life, look to Jesus only he delivers, forgives, and grants eternal life. You want to talk about deliverance? In the Old Testament, it was looking to the coming Messiah, Jesus Christ, the one who would wash the sins away from the world. For us, after the New Testament era, we know that Jesus came. Jesus entered human, God Almighty left the glory of heaven, entered human history, took on human flesh, lived a life with no sin because he is the perfect, sinless Lamb of God. And Jesus Christ was nailed to a cross to take my sins, to take your sins. He, he, to, to deliver us from all our wrongs and all our sins and all our bitterness and all our shame. And on the cross, he bore it all and said, it's finished, and he died in our place. And for three days, he was buried. And on the third day, he rose again in glory and in power. And he offers this delivering power of salvation and forgiveness of sins to all who will believe. Our part is not to work hard enough to get it. We can't. It's to receive this gift that God has given through Jesus Christ. Our God loves to deliver. So you can sing during the storm if you've come to the cross and received Jesus. Because you know what? You know you've been delivered from your sins. Man, life may be hard, but I've been delivered from my sins. This situation is painful, but I know heaven is my home and Jesus is preparing a place. I've been delivered from my sins. Man, the, ec the economy is up and down and going crazy. Yeah, but I know who I believe in and I stand in his deliverance. Man, this relationship is falling apart. I'm doing all I can and they just won't respond. And, and you go, it's hard, it's painful. Yes, tell God about your pain and yet he delivers. And you can hold on to that. Whatever you're going through. We, we know that he delivers and we can sing through the storm because we know this is true. I want to invite you to look in your Bibles at Psalm 4 because this is the second psalm we're going to look at today has a similar kind of feel to it. There's this, this painful expression and yet this confidence in God. That's the lament journey. It's saying, God, here's my pain, here's my struggle, and yet I trust in you. So again, as you listen to Psalm 4, Will you listen for the emotional state of the psalmist? What's the emotion? What's the feeling of the psalm? And will you also listen for their connection to God? Because the, the beauty of each psalm is that whether they're crying out in pain or crying out and declaring God's goodness, they are connected to God. Don't walk from God, away from God in the storms. Walk toward him through the storms. Hold his hand and walk with him and toward him as you go through tough times. So look at me at Psalm 4 beginning in verse 1. Answer me when I call to you, my righteous God. Give me relief from my distress. Have mercy on me and hear my prayer. How long will you people turn my glory into shame? How long will you love delusions and seek false gods? Know that the Lord has set apart his faithful servant for himself. The Lord hears when I call to him. Tremble and do not sin when you are on your beds. Search your hearts and be silent. Offer your sacrifices of the righteous. Offer the sacrifices of the righteous and trust in the Lord. Many, Lord, are asking, who will bring us prosperity? Let the light of your face shine on us. Fill my heart with joy when their, grind, when their grain and wine abound. In peace I will lie down and sleep for you alone, Lord. Make me dwell in safety. I love that last verse. In peace I will lie down and sleep for you alone, Lord. Make me dwell in safety. 
Man, for a psalm that begins in the heartache and struggle of life, it sure ends with a sense of God's comfort and presence and peace. So let's look at the fifth reason that we can sing through the storm. And here it is. Because I know he hears me and answers my cry. We can sing in the storms of life because we can be confident that God hears our prayer, he hears our song, he hears our call for help. He always hears us. Look at verse one and verse three of Psalm number four. Verse one says this. Answer me when I call to you, my righteous God. Give me relief from my distress. Have mercy on me and hear my prayers. And then look at, listen to verse 3. Know that the Lord has set apart his faithful servants for himself. The Lord hears when I call to him. You can live with confidence that God hears you when you cry out to him. If you know him, if you love him, he hears you. And let me tell you something. If you're not yet a follower of Jesus... And I know every week at Shoreline, whether we're, whether we're gathered on our campus or whether, whether we're gathered online in our homes, I know we always have people who are walking closely with Jesus and know him and love him, and we always have people who are trying to figure out the whole Jesus thing. And I will tell you this, if you don't yet know Jesus, if you cry out to him and talk to him, I will promise you something, he hears you. He's waiting for you to cry out to him. He's waiting for you to call out and say, God, help me. He's getting ready, he wants to show himself to you. So cry out to him and trust that he answers your cry. So cry out to God, expect to hear back. I mean, actually expect, when you talk to God, expect that God is in this relationship. He wants to speak to you, sometimes quietly, sometimes boldly, sometimes through another person, through the scriptures, through a circumstance, through a dream, through a vision, through a whisper in your ear. But God is a God who still speaks to his people. I remember when I was coming, looking at coming to Shoreline. I was coming out to Shoreline. This is now more than 11 years ago. And I was coming out every four to six weeks and working with Shoreline, trying to, I was kind of consulting, working with the church on some different uh, future things. And one of the things was this transition of the founding pastor to a new pastor. And for about a year, people at Shoreline would say, you should pray about coming to be our pastor. And so for about a year, Sherry and I would pray regularly, Lord, do you want us to go and leave what we're doing in Michigan? And do you want us to go to Shoreline and be part of this body of believers and serve Jesus here? And we kept praying and listening. We didn't hear from God. It took almost a year. And it's not, I don't think it's that God was speaking and we weren't listening. God was waiting for the right moment. When I tell you God will speak, I'll tell you this. Me being at Shoreline took a year of listening. So don't quit listening. Keep crying out to God, expecting him to speak and listen. Number six, I can sing through the storm because I know whose face shines on me. I can sing to God and sing through the storm, even in a minor key, even in sharing sometimes words of pain and struggle, because I know that the face of God, whatever the storm is doing, somehow through the darkness of the storm, the light of the face of God is still shining on me. Listen to verse six of Psalm four. Many, Lord, are asking, who will bring us prosperity? Let the light of your face shine on us. Here's what we need to do. Look to God. And see his light shine on you and from you. Look to God and say, God, shine your light on me. And then let your light shine from me and bring light to others. There's a beautiful prayer in the book of Numbers. Chapter 6, verses 24 to 26. It's called Aaron's prayer or the Aaronic prayer or the Aaronic blessing. Aaron's blessing. And he's taught to bring this blessing on the people of God. And here it is. Here's the blessing. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord turn his face toward you and give you peace. What a prayer. What a declaration. May may the Lord's face shine on you. May he turn his face toward you. Learn to pray that. Learn to pray and say, God, I, I invite you to turn your face upon me, to, to, to bring your light to shine upon me so that it can shine to others as well. How can I sing through a stormy time of life? Number seven, because I know the source of my joy. I know where my joy comes from, and it's not from, it's not from New York's stock market report. I know where my joy comes from, and it's not whatever I hear on news tonight. I know where my joy comes from, And it's not this person in my life who I look to who cares about me, but who's imperfect. I know where my joy comes from. And the reason I can sing through the storm is my joy doesn't change because God doesn't change. Listen to these words from Psalm chapter four, verse seven. 
Fill my heart with joy when their wine, when their grain and new wine abound. It's this prayer, God, fill my heart with joy. I want to dare you. I want to dare you to ask, Lord, bring me joy. I dare you in the storms of life, in the painful times of life, to say, God, this is my prayer. Let me see your face. Let me remember, though, that though all these things in the world might be going wrong, if I can look upon your face and know your love and be reminded of your goodness, you are my joy and you don't change. We can, we can hold on to that. I want to encourage you, if you need to grow in joy, I want to encourage you to read the book of Philippians. Short little book. In, in, in your Bible, it's probably two or three pages is all. Front and back, just very short little book. But it's written by the Apostle Paul while he's in prison because he was preaching Jesus. He's in a storm. And you read the book of Philippians and see how many times the word joy, rejoice, rejoicing, or a joyful spirit comes through that book. You discover the Apostle Paul is joyful not because life goes his way, because it's not going well for him, but because God is his joy. And number eight, how can I sing through the storm? Because I know the source of my peace. He is my joy, but God is also our peace. Look at verse 8 of Psalm 4. In peace I lie down and sleep. For you alone, Lord, make me dwell in safety. In peace I lie down and sleep. A peaceful sleep. What a gift that is. Why can I rest in peace? For you alone, Lord, make me dwell in safety. Let's do this. Let's declare, in with it, declare it with confidence. God is watching over you. God is watching over you. If you're in a room with other people, look at somebody and say, God is watching over you. That should bring peace. And say to yourself, God is watching over me. I encourage you to say that out loud right now. God is watching over me. Man, there's no accidents. He's on the throne. He's watching over me. And so in these two Psalms, Psalm 3 and Psalm 4, and many other Psalms, many that you heard during the service, many other that are found right here in the book of Psalms, there's this realization that storms come and they're tough, but we can keep singing through the storms. And the laments show us that part of that song is to say, God, I'm struggling. God, I'm hurting to be totally honest with God. But within that to say, and yet, God, I trust you. Yet you are my peace. You are my hope. You are my song. You are my joy. You are my deliverer. You are my sustainer. You are the shield around me. And yes, this is hard, but God, you have me in the palm of your hands and you're on the throne of heaven and the throne of my life. So I will lie down and sleep in peace because you alone, Lord, make me dwell in safety. Lord Jesus, as we walk through the storms of life and we all will, will you remind us that we can sing through the storms. And if we don't have the words of that song, let us go to Psalm 3 and Psalm 4 and Psalm 13 and Psalm 22 and many other psalms that just, that just cry out from the depth of the heart and the soul to be honest about pain, but to rely on you and acknowledge your goodness and your presence and your power. God, I pray for every single person listening to these words right now who is in the middle of a storm. And God, I believe that's many, many people. Will you help them find their voice to still sing of your goodness and your greatness and your joy and your peace and your faithfulness while they're honest about their pain. Let them also, let us, each one of us be honest about who we believe in and bring us the hope we need even in the storms of life. We pray this in Jesus' name and for his glory. Amen.